855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. ISIL also continues to lose territory in Iraq. <laughs> ISIL had already lost across Kirkuk province and at Tikrit. More recently, ISIL lost at Sinjar, losing a strategic highway. ISIL Why lost does he sound so Baji unhappy? Does he sound like a leader who's leading the troops in a battle for life and death? Why does he sound so like he doesn't give a damn? Could it be because he doesn't give a damn? Why does this fool talk in vague platitudes about virtually everything and get away with it? Answer, because of Wolf Blitzer, because of Jake Tapper, because of George Stephanopoulos, because of the useless Democrat-controlled media. That's all. Vague platitudes? That's what passes for leadership today. Now, I don't know what I want to do with calls, and I want to take calls. Maybe I need a vacation. Maybe I need a vacation. But the problem with a vacation is there's nothing I like to do on vacation. And what what are you going to do on your vacation? I was going to do a little show on that, which is, are you looking forward to a vacation? Normal people like vacations. They do things like ski. Can you imagine that? White people ski. I never learned to ski. My kids I taught to ski because I figured if they're going to be an American, they better learn to ski. So even when I was a poor grad student, I took them to ski lessons. And they both ski. I don't know. Maybe they're better Americans than me, but I don't ski. I don't play tennis. I don't golf. Court martial for Bergdahl. Army charges desertion, endangering unit by going AWOL in Afghanistan. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that they recommended a court martial for Bergdahl. I'm surprised that Obama didn't embrace him and take him into the White House as a special attache uh, for Iraq and, and Syria. He could have been made a special uh, attache to ISIL. I'm just shocked that the U.S. Army decided to refer the case for, for a general court martial to face charges of desertion and endangering the safety of his unit. I hope that didn't leak out to the White House. I really hope not. Now, here's a tough story for me to read because someone has blood on their hands, and his name is Jay Johnson, in my opinion. Are you ready for this? ABC News, right-wing source. Secret U.S. policy blocks agents from looking at social media of visa applicants, former officials say. Fearing a civil liberties backlash and bad PR for the O administration, Homeland Security dunce Jay Johnson refused in early 2014 to end a secret U.S. policy that prohibited immigration officials from reviewing the social media messages of all foreign citizens applying for U.S. visas. During that time period, immigration officials were not allowed to use or review social media as part of the screening process. As a result, as a result, the witch from San Bernardino, the face from hell itself, couldn't look worse than that one in the headscarf that stares out at us, that ugliest face in the history of humanity, the one who machine gun innocent people at a Christmas party, slipped through. Tashfin Malik passed through three background checks, even though her social media posts were sympathetic to terrorists, terrorism, and ISIL. All because Obama's hand-picked Department of Homeland Security dunce, Jay Johnson, feared a civil liberties backlash and bad public relations. Why is he not fired? Do you agree with me that Jay Johnson, don't call the show, you know he should be fired. You know if we had a legitimate government, he never would have been appointed, that's number one. <clears throat> but aside from that, if we had a legitimate government... The hearings would have been occurring now from the idiot dunce Republicans, and Johnson would be on the hot seat, and they'd recommend he be fired. He has blood on his hands, and he still has his job. And Obama says we're attacking the Islamic State harder than ever. Platitudes and lies. Lies and platitudes. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Good Monday. How are you? Good Monday. Got to work, plan to sleep on me. He'll come Tuesday. Oh, oh, Tuesday. Oh, we're not even at Tuesday yet. The dumb debates are tomorrow night. 
with of all people on earth, Wolf Blitzer interrogating Republicans. They've learned nothing. And frankly, I don't know why Donald Trump is even appearing. He's so far ahead in the polls. He doesn't need to be raked over the coals. I would recommend that he not even go there and that there'd be an, just an empty slot and let the others attack him with him out, without him being there. I don't get it. I'm not going to watch them. I'm going to go to a Christmas party at a, at a dealership, a new car dealership, and that's it. I don't, I don't want to. How many times can I look at this garbage? The, this, the, it's nothing. It's a distraction. It's nothing. It's the, the president's been elected already. They selected Hillary. She won. Now go home. Go and wrap your Kwanzaa presents. They picked her. It's over. That's all. It doesn't matter that she screwed up the whole world. It doesn't matter that her Arab Spring policy produced the millions of refugees, displaced them all over Europe, broke our borders open. It doesn't matter that millions of unaccounted dollars go into the Clinton Foundation. She is the next president of the United States, the best I can tell. I don't know what the charade is here. Actually, I do know what the charade is. The charade is to make you think that there's an election. The charade is to give you hope. The charade is to keep you from revolting. The charade is just another charade. They select the president. Nobody elects the president in the United States. I don't know how long this has been going on, but I suspect for quite a long time. It's a selection process, not an election process. And the New World Order has selected her to uh, finish the bull off. Right now, Obama, for seven years now, has been using his picadors to torture the bull, the American bull to poke us with their left-wing sticks. All of the freaks have been led into the arena after they blinded the bull. After they blinded the bull, all of the freaks, the sickest people in the world, have been permitted to poke the American bull with sticks like the evil people in the bull ring. And then the picador comes along. The, mat the matador has permitted them to poke the poor bull with the sticks, the sickest Jackals known to mankind have been poking America for seven straight years now. Every institution, from the hoof to the ear, has been poked by these sick people. And in for the kill, there comes the sword and the cape. The masked woman enters the arena to finish the bull off, and her ears will be thrown to Saudi Arabia. The ears of the bull, rather, will be thrown to Saudi Arabia. They will cut the ears off the bull after it is dead, and throw it, throw it to Saudi Arabia. Not a bad, it's very flowery, nice idea. Make for a good cartoon, I suppose. So, it's basically holiday time. New coffee offers same heart benefit as red wine, chemist says. The University of New Hampshire chemist says he's developed a coffee that provides the same benefits to the heart as red wine. The Portsmouth Herald reports that Glenn Miller infused Arabica coffee beans with resveratrol, the natural antioxidant found in the skins of grapes and used to make red wine. And he says the infusion happens during the roasting of beans for his product to achieve its heart-healthy effect. Why don't you just eat grapes? I don't understand this. I eat red grapes every day. What's this with the... What do you have to have a chemical thrown into your gut for? I don't get this. Last night I drank red wine. I, 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 I eat grapes at night before going to sleep. I have done this for years. He says each cup of his magic coffee provides the same amount of antioxidants as a glass of red wine. If you stop the average person in the street and ask them what an antioxidant is, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. They have no idea, but they know it's good for you. They know if it has an antioxidant, it's good for you. Well, I've been writing popular books on health for a long time. My first published book was in 1972, and I know what an antioxidant is, and I also know what it is, and it's not a magic substance. But a common sense would dictate that if it comes from the skins of grapes, why don't you just eat grapes with skins? I don't quite understand that. I eat red grapes, and I drink coffee, and I'm not going to live forever. What do you think? You're going to live forever? You're not going to live, for, live forever. You just won't, you're just not going to live forever. In fact, I looked at the picture. I just brewed a cup of coffee. I got myself a $20 white trash coffee maker. I love it. I had this $500 Italian machine. It broke down. It's like a, a Ferrari. Beautiful to look at, but unbelievable. Every other day, I mean, to, to just make a cup of coffee, you need an engineering manual. It hisses and it groans and it, it practically sings an aria to you from uh, Pagliacci. It's unbelievable, but it can, you can't make a coffee out of it. 
every other day I'm calling a guy in New Jersey, some kid who sounds like he should be working in a scongealy shack on Mulberry Street, and he's giving me, like, secret methods to make the machine work. Pull out the thing and pull it in and stick your hand under it and look where the grinds are and run a finger and the did and that, and then boom, and rub it in the thing and put it back in. If it doesn't work, drop dead and go. So I went and I bought a $20 Mr. Coffee machine. I got so fed up with the Italian coffee makers that I had, I swear to God. I went back to the grinder, which I kind of like. I like that sound of the beans grinding in the morning. It wakes me and the dog up. I hate the sound, actually, but it symbolizes morning to me, the noise that it makes. And then I got the paper filters. I did get the hippie filters, though I won't use the one with the chlorine bleach in it. I know better than that. I, I don't want cancer. So I got the very uh, hippy-dippy brown coffee filter paper. Costs a little bit more, but believe me, it's a smart move. And I put in the water. I put in the bean. I pour the water. I press it. And in two minutes, it makes me a cup of coffee without singing me, you know, uh, an aria. I don't understand why anyone needs those machines anymore, but whatever. Three of them broke down the same day. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight. What do we got in the caller? Did I take a call yet? I had one call today. Iowa. I'm not talking about Iowa. I'm not talking about New Hampshire. You know, it's one state I've never been to is Iowa. Now that I think about it, I'm, no, no, I'm not denigrating the great state of Iowa. I have a wonderful affiliate in Iowa, but I've never been there. There's a few other states I've never been to. That's one of them. It's number one state that sticks out of my mind is a state I've never been to. Why is it a bellwether? Why is it a bellwether? I don't get it for what's going to happen in an election. That may have been true when America was 96% white and people still owned a farm. What in the world is wrong with you people? And then the media goes crazy about who wins in this. It's always won. It's always predicted. Yeah, right, sure. Right. So maybe I should take calls on health instead. No, I know what I want to do. I don't want to do news. I don't want to do any more news. I'm sick of the news. Teddy, here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to be Dr. Mike, Uncle Mike now, and I'm going to do lifestyle questions because many people are very depressed right now. Otherwise, they wouldn't be listening to talk radio. In other words, if you were a normal person and you had a regular life, would you be listening to me? No. Nah. You'd be like everyone else, shopping like an idiot, going to a holiday party like a good guy, planning a vacation, planning a family event. You wouldn't be eating your heart out over politics. So it means you have, you, you have problems. You're agitated. And I don't claim to know everything, nor do I claim I can help you, but I do have enough of an ego and enough of an education to sus I suspect that I probably could help you as a lifestyle coach. I can guarantee you I'll do as good a job as the people out there who charge $400 an hour. What do you think, they're smarter than I am? You think they have some magic answer for you any more than a, a shrink does? You know, when I was a young kid, my mother, she had plenty of problems, real ones, real problems. And she was very sad as a result. And I know she needed a therapist, but there was no such thing in those days for poor people. No, you know, no one would go, and then they were ashamed of it. If they admitted they had mental problems, you know, or issues, rather put it that way, or the need to talk to someone. So she would say to me, a little kid, she'd say, you know, Michael, she says, I think that you, anyone doesn't need a psychiatrist. What they really need is a good friend to talk to. I, what does a kid know? Your mother tells you that, so it's true. Guess what? It's true. The older I've gotten, I realize that if you have a good friend that you can talk to, you don't need a psychiatrist. A, they're not charging you. B, I'm talking a good friend. I'm not talking about someone casual. If you got something that's bothering you on your heart and you want to get it off your heart, right, off your chest, so to speak, you can talk to a friend. I mean, it comes at the end of the day. Don't you feel better? So I think I'm going to be that friend right now. I'm going to try it for the next segment on the Savage Nation. I'm sick and tired of politics. So are you. And I want to just do uh, life coach stuff. So since we don't have time to screen the calls, which will take about 12 minutes per call, I'm just going to take a call. I'm going to stab in the dark. Which one of the calls are not anything to do with politics? I don't even know what numbers. I'm confused now because I got lights on and no calls and the screen and, and this. And that. I don't want line. All right, line one, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please, line one. Nothing. Hello? A blank job. Yes, go ahead. What's on your mind? Oh, um... So I, uh, I'm 18 years old. I just graduated from high school, and I'm interested in uh, how, how do you get through your days knowing what's going on with America today? Uh, Good. Now, that's a, that's a, that, there you go. Now, that's a legitimate question. It's very difficult. Obama's destroying every cultural value in the society. He's destroying every American value that he possibly can.
He is pillaging the nation, wrecking the economy, destroying